Hello everyone, welcome to my, oh I guess this would technically be my third vlog. Um, today I'm going to talk about pricing, um, specifically pricing for portrait photographers. I was in a group on Facebook uh, and somebody was talking about not getting enough clients um, and what their pricing was and what the people were choosing over her uh, pricing was. And it prompted me to do this this video about about that. Um, one of the common problems that I see is that people are just too cheap, um, especially around where I live. Um, I live around two American Air Force bases in the UK, um, and I'm not sure if this is just a military thing or not. But there is a plethora of photographers in the area that are extraordinarily cheap and by extraordinarily cheap I mean what, 30 quid for a session and you get all the images on a disc that's extraordinarily cheap now I don't have any problem with those photographers they're not my competitors they're not going after the same people uh, that I target with my uh, photography um, I should back up a little bit here. Um, I am first and foremost a commercial photographer. I do editorials for magazines and fashion and advertising and things like that. It wasn't until very recently, and very recently I mean I think August is when I officially launched it, I started doing family portraits. Um, but not normal family portraits and that's important because that's coming to come into the pricing aspect here in a minute. My family portraits were spun off of what I do with advertising photography. I started taking what I do with that and applying it to families. And you get images like this. And I've done some images like this. And some family portraits that are like this. I think that you'll agree uh, those are not normal family portraits. They're not, they're not at all something that um, you would expect to see from family portraits. And this is very important. When you've got a lot of photographers offering very similar products, it doesn't even have to be photographers, let's just talk products. When you have very similar products, that the differences between them are minuscule or minute and sometimes not even noticeable, the customer is always going to choose the cheapest option always if there's no reason for them to spend more money on the more expensive product they're going to choose the cheaper product and that's true with anything so we put this into an example if you went into a shop and you had three tvs to choose from all three tvs were 1080p hd all were smart tvs and all offered 3D. But one was say 300 quid, one was 400 quid, one was 500 quid. If there was no discernible difference between those three, you're always gonna choose that 300 quid one. Why would you spend 500 quid on a TV that gives you the same thing that's 200 quid cheaper? You wouldn't. And this is where the problem comes in. So people start, they start seeing these very cheap photographers in their area and they're getting business. They're probably getting lots of business. After all, they're 30 quid for a photo shoot. At that price, you figure I'll take a punt, see what the photos are look like. If they're no good, well then, it was no good. It was 30 quid. But these other photographers see that pricing and they know they're better than them. So they charge a little bit more. So instead of 30 quid, maybe they charge 75 quid. Now when the customer comes up and they see that, they're going to see maybe a slight improvement over from one to the other. And they're going to say, why is this one more expensive than the other? And if there's not much difference between the two, they're going to choose the cheaper one. Now this is an easy problem to overcome. And the solution here is to make yourself different from the other ones. If you look really similar, but it's just better, they're gonna choose the, the cheaper option probably 75% of the time. If you do something to make yourself different from them, offer something that's 
noticeably better, then you'll start getting more clients. But now we come to the other problem, which that price is probably still too cheap. And let me give you another example. Say you walk into a shop again, and you've got two toasters. I don't know why I picked toasters. It's the example I used in the group on Facebook. <laughs> you've got two toasters sitting side by side, right? One's plastic, has a lever and a dial, and that's it. Not very good. And say it's 40 pounds. Sitting next to that toaster is a shiny chrome metal toaster. It's got LED lights on it. It's got defrost options on it. It's got every option you can imagine a toaster will have. And it's 60 pounds. Now there's a problem because there's clearly a difference between these two toasters. But this one's not that much more expensive than the cheap one. And you're wondering, why is that a problem? Well, I'll tell you, because if you looked at those two toasters, you would say, why is that one so cheap? There must be something wrong with that toaster. So you go with the other one because you know why it's cheap. So if you're really good at your photography, but you're only a little bit more expensive than the okay or average or even shit photographers, people are going to choose the shit photographer because they're going to think something's wrong with yours because you're not as expensive as they would expect. And this is a hard concept for a lot of photographers to grasp. And I'll admit it was a hard concept for me to grasp as well. I showed you what my photography is and just a quick refresher. Here's just one example. That's not an easy image to create. It takes a lot of time, a lot of planning, a lot of time shooting and a lot of time editing. And it is very clearly different than anything offered. Well, almost anywhere really in terms of uh, family portraits. I'm not trying to toot my own home right now, but there's not a lot of people offering that sort of photography for families. These, when I first decided to, to offer that as a portraits brand, pricing was a real struggle for me because you look, I looked for like really good portrait photographers and looked at their pricing and saw what they were charging. And I could have run with that model and I probably could would have gotten some, some customers from it. But the problem with what I do is you only get one, maybe two images from my shoots. And I need to be able to make a living doing that. I don't have 30 to 40 images for the customers to come and choose a bunch of pictures from. So I had to really sit down and think about this. And I also know that, and I'm not saying mine's better, but I'm saying mine is drastically different than some of the other really good photographers. And I knew mine's drastically different, so the pricing had to be drastically different as well. So I did just that. I made my pricing drastic. Um, and by drastic, I mean that it, if you're gonna want a, a portrait session with me for my family, what my family portraits are, it's a commitment. And, and I needed that because there's a lot involved with, with these before the shoot even happens. I mean, I get to know the families, I get to find out each one of their personalities, and we put that into the photo. The families are a big part of the planning process. Um, I've kind of gotten off on a little bit of a tangent here. What I'm saying is my pricing, I'll just throw it out there, 995 pounds for the sitting fee. That gets you the uh, pre-shoot consultation, I'll give you a form to fill out, we get to know each other, we plan the image, we shoot it, I edit it, and then you can purchase prints and things on top of that. It's a lot higher of an initial cost than the other really good photographers that I looked at. The overall cost for, for mine compared to others is probably about the same. You know, when you look at buying prints and everything, the cost with me doing what I do and like another really good portrait photographer is probably about the same and that's what I wanted it. Now for my market around where I live, my product is clearly different than everybody else's offers and the price is way different from everybody else. If anybody wants me around here, they want me. They're not going to be shopping and that's what you want as a photographer. You want somebody to want you, not choosing you because of the price. Uh, and that sadly is where a lot of photographers get into trouble and why they struggle to make a living doing portraits. They try to compete on price. 
and their photography is no different than anybody else's. So just to recap on that, as a portrait photographer, you want somebody to choose you. They, and actually, I'm not gonna say choose. As a portrait photographer, you want your customers to want you. Not choose you, they want you. And that's a big difference because choosing you means that there was other options and they might have chosen you for a number of different reasons and it could have been price, it could have been style, it could have been availability. You want them to want you. Price doesn't matter, availability doesn't matter, your style does matter because that's what they want. Make yourself different, price yourself different, and things will be fine. If you're the same as everybody else and you're more expensive, you're gonna fail because they're gonna wonder why you're, why you're more expensive. If you're way better than everybody else but you're priced the same, you're gonna fail because everybody's gonna think there's something wrong. If you're way better than everybody else, your prices should be way higher than everybody else. That's what people expect. And for some reason, people can't grasp that as photography. And I'll repeat it again, think about it when you go into a shop. When you see a high-end product, you expect a high-end price. If it's not a high-end price, you think something's wrong. So again, if you're the same as everybody else and more expensive, people won't choose you because they're gonna choose the cheaper option. If you're way better than everybody else, but you're the same price, they're gonna think something's wrong. So better, higher price. Anyways, that's it, I'm starting to ramble now. Till next time, see you later, bye.